So say I'm playing and I've had a good game, I've scored. Say I look up and it's 70 minutes yeah. and I've scored, I'm having a good game. Yeah. I'd be like, come on, take me off now in case I make a bad touch or I miss a chance. That's my head. Like, I, do, I want to go off now because I'm having a good game and I don't want to spoil it. Yeah. So I was remanded for four months. So in them four months, I wasn't sure what my sentence was going to be. Yeah. So I was still thinking I might get a year. I might even get, like, out. And then I got seven. It's like, what? So that knocked me for six. I thought, I'm not doing seven years. I might as well just go and top myself or something. Yeah. So, but I've got to be careful not to project too far in the future. Oh, I want this one there. Just be happy with what you've got. Live in the moment, live in the day. And today's been a good day. On today's episode of Inside the Game, I'm joined by a footballer who became the Premier League's youngest player and ended up in prison for handling drugs. He's here today in the studio to tell us how he turned his life around. It's Michael Branch. Michael, welcome. Thanks, Buzz. What's your earliest memory of kicking a football around? Oh, good question. Um, my dad was a bit worried I didn't, because I was a late developer. I say late developer, seven or eight, I still had no interest in footy. And it worried him. Yeah, it worried him. Because <laughs> <laughs> obviously he played at Liverpool and yeah. uh, he was a pro at Liverpool. So I think he was uh, hoping I'd be born as soon as I could walk, I'd want to kick. Yeah. I had cousins who always was at their house, they were girls, so I was a bit worried. But uh, about eight, seven or eight, I decided, about eight, nine, sorry, Said I will come on one day. Said I want to play football. That was it. You just made up. All better off. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. So what? How did it develop then? What did you did you just go out doing stuff with him, or did you did he get you in the team, or what? Yeah. So obviously, um, he'd do a little bits with me, like well, little bits every day. <laughs> it was full on from then. Once I said it was, uh, if it was in, that was a operation branch. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we'd we'd go every day after school runs for work. This that or the other then obviously i must have shown some kind of skill or some ability i uh, went round to my local team aph the manager lived by steve Shippey, walked around knocked on the door i think it was nine said kind of you're the manager of the under 11s kind of why he said you're too small he said but you can come and train by yeah. sound so i went and trained and then the next week i was playing <laughs> So, Steve Shippey, by the way. Yeah. Tremendous ship. Yeah. Tremendous ship. I used to always get sent there. I go there, right? Because we lived in Lucan, so it was only, say, about 400 metres or something. And I'd, I'd go and I'd say I'd have to keep the ball up all the way there. And if I dropped it, I'd start again. Like oh, this OCD of me when I was young. Yeah, so <laughs> could take a while to get the chips. I've done a shame. People fuming. But you're yeah, getting everyone to tea. Yeah. Got home when it was cold. Yeah. The um, So it didn't take you long then to show your promise. No. Did you feel any pressure because, or, or were you just not aware of that? Your dad was obviously good at footy being at Liverpool. Was there any of that, or, or were you just not at the time? At the time, I didn't, I didn't uh, feel any pressure because no. it was so. I'm not, this is not an ego or anything. It was just so easy at the time for me. Yeah. Uh, so I played the Liverpool schoolboys, uh, broke some records or whatever. It was like in the paper all the time. And at that age, it was no pressure, just got goals. Okay, footy. Yeah. It was all, all I knew. Yeah. So that's just. I know what I mean? Obviously, Ped might see it different. <laughs> so I played the school with Ped, but uh, yeah, uh, it was just, I just enjoyed it. No pressure, because the ball, we'd be playing everywhere. We'd jump over Sudley Infant School in the summer, play there, because they had two trees that would belt us for goals. <laughs> uh, come from the APH, so yeah, it was just literally football. Yeah. And obviously, Evan, with my dad being a red, he wanted me to try and get me to go down the Liverpool and the yeah. Liverpool side, but no, I think also because they released them, I, I, I all held that against them. Did you? And my granddad took me in my first game, which was Evan, so that was it. You were in? Yeah. Right. And, so I, see, I think to rebel against me, that a little bit as well. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. What, um, what, how did Evan come about then? Uh, Sid Benson. Like famous scouts from Liverpool. Oh, uh, well. Yeah, yeah. Took me to Everton. Yeah. Did he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, he seen me playing for the schoolboys. I said, I want to go down. We lived in Egbeth. Back then, the Centre of Excellence was up at uh, Belfield. Yeah. West Derby. West Derby. West Derby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we didn't have no car. So, and Sid didn't drive. So it was either like, get, some days I'd get two buses there to go and train. Otherwise, Sid would get a taxi down to pick me up, then to take <laughs> me back. So it was brilliant. I loved them. Yeah. Yeah. It, he was, uh, he was one of the good guys. Yeah, he was a good lad. So great fella. Uh, I think at that time, because for people who were, who were listening to it now, it's very different, isn't it, now the academies these kids are in? 
every day in some case yeah. they've got the initials on and all of this you know the boots for them and all that it was very different back then wasn't it yeah it was way different i think it was twice a week we'd go in mm. uh say a tuesday and a thursday or a monday and a wednesday a couple of hours we'd have it <laughs> at belfield it was an indoor we had one of the first indoors mm. astros but i swear it was just concrete painted green <laughs> it was that hard <laughs> and that cold uh but it was not like it is now the way the they have everything now we would literally turn up Train them was off. You've no physio, no nothing there. Probably just stay back on yeah. two buses. But it was good. It was it was it was around good people. Know what I mean? Then mm. we could play for the city as well. Now yeah. I think they don't want you to play for the city. I'm being an academy, so I could also play for with my mates of a Saturday and Sunday, which is a big part of growing up. Yeah. Now the kids they can only play for Everton, or the, so you miss out that bit of your childhood. I was going to say the. Again, like the same, yeah, when I was younger, we, you could you could play with your mates as well. I think that's a massive part of the development. I, I do believe that it's it's not for the better, that they're protected that way. Because yeah. I bet you I bet you, you learn more playing with your mates and getting kicked and stuff yeah, than, and than you, just being protected by, by that environment. And it's being end. a kid as well. If you think about it, so you say I go in there at eight. At 18, I've been going to the same place for 10 years. Yeah. That's like going to the same job for 10 years. Yeah. And you're only 18. People think you're only just starting your career, but yeah. you've been visiting that same place three, four times a week for Absolutely. 10 years. Yeah. You can get bored or just, oh, here again. Yeah. Um, so it is. people don't see that side of it. And then the other side is, like my son, he was at the academy for a bit, and some of his mates, teammates from the Saturday, Sunday team, then got to academies, weren't allowed to play with them for the next three or four years, mm. then got released. So they'd missed that, and now they yeah. don't want to go back because they feel a little bit ashamed because they've been released. Yeah. It's tough, it's way tough. I'm glad I'd done it back then, because uh, it's just so much pressure on them so early, and the parents as well, a lot more pressure off parents these days. Yeah. I mean, I I had it. I think I had it quite tough on my dad, but looking back, he only had my best interest at heart. Yeah. Uh, but now the money that's involved, parents have everything to try and get them. It's crazy, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. obviously you just said you've, you've got a lad yourself who's, who's been, or you know, gone yeah. and experienced that. And I guess when when you were younger, the it, it was still obviously it was still very difficult. It was you know to get picked up. You had to be good and, and go yeah. training, and you know there was different different stages. Like when I was there, it was like there was only a certain amount of like. YTS, YTS, yeah. YTS available. Whereas yeah. now they take like a whole team and then it's yeah. a whole team and things like that. But the pressure was nowhere near. No, like it, and it, and like we, you were just saying, then you go to Belfield twice a week where they're yeah. in every day now, and, and you're always if you've ever watched them academy programs, don't know whether you have, but they've got the kids who are like nah, like fighting for a contract yeah. thing. You just like where you're just taking all the fun out of the game. Yeah. And do you think it is because? The riches are, are there. If you make it, the riches are there. So the parents go, right, Yeah, the you're parents, my way out. Oh, without a doubt, like you your golden ticket, isn't it? Um, and it's fair enough. You see it happen. Uh, but I remember my son being about four or five. and get, We got a phone call from Everton. You've had a son and he's four or five. Do you want to bring him in? It's like, so I took him in. He was like, just what's this? He's up at Finch Farm running around with a ball in his hand. <laughs> like, that's not for me for now. You know what I mean? I'll come back in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so we went back a few years later. Then he understood a bit more. Yeah, yeah. understood. But because I had the pressure, I sort of wasn't pushing him. He was like, if he wants to, he does it. If he yeah. doesn't. And people were saying, you're not pushing him enough. But then I didn't want to push, do what I'd done to my dad. So maybe it's like just that balance. Yeah, it's Let them be the kids. It? And then if they're good enough, they'll, they should still make it. Yeah, yeah. And definitely. as long as they're happy, that's the main thing, because kids in that academy, like, they're there, and they don't want to be there, no, for a fact, they don't, the parents are taking them, because it's like four times a week now, then play Sundays. It's, it's a lot, isn't it? yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> when it works, no. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you then, so yeah. obviously, you were, you were obviously decent, um, <laughs> breaking records and all that, so when you, you know, what was it like being offered a concert, you know, being offered like what was it was it apprenticeship was they called an apprenticeship YT. was it was, was it YTF? YT, yeah. Yeah, yeah so similar to what you're saying about these programs where you see people fighting for it so at the end of say it was 15 no wouldn't it be yeah it would have been 15, yeah, 15 wouldn't it yeah. when you leave school mm -hmm. but 16, yeah. so your teammates would be all like, oh, I wonder if I'll get it wonder, and it was like being in school you sit outside and then you go in with your parents and you're getting told whether or not it's ruthless yeah. but i'd already been promised one like 
a year before, two years before. So All I, right. So no, right. no, no, I'm not saying <laughs> no, that. I only met him. No, no. So I didn't feel that pressure. That's what yeah. I'm getting at. But yeah. I, I lived it through my mates because some of them did and some of them didn't. Yeah. And it's like, oh. And it's tough because they've been with you on that journey or everything for could be four or five years and then mm. that's it see you later it's like wow that's how cutthroat it is it's difficult isn't it? yeah yeah but yeah. i look also i went to lillishaw didn't i for a couple of years so yeah. that sort of got me away from everton and got me away from the city got me away from a bit of pressure so i could just develop on my own out the way well what was that like it's obviously you go there you go there at 14. last two Were years you? of senior school yeah it's all right. yeah yeah so 14. Year 10 and 11 in new money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fourth and fifth Fourth year. And fifth. Yeah. 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 Uh, so that's St. Margaret's there mm. in year three, yeah. old year three, which is year. Nine. Yeah, yeah, nine, nine now. Nine. Yeah, yeah. Um, All right, you're throwing them back. <laughs> you, you start the trial process. So yeah. each club could send four or five yeah, at yeah. that age for national trials yeah so we'd start with regionals cut it down cut it down so over the season you'd have you were trialing every couple of months and yeah then cut down so each time i was like i wouldn't say like the x factor but you're going then will you make it to the next round yeah yeah and then in the end it got cut so 16 got in and at the last cut was like 20 of us there so four of us were going it was like crazy and then i got there so last two years i'm off to boarding school down south bit of a relief away from me dad because the pressure was getting he was one more, more. Yeah, yeah yeah we had a bad game he'd be on my case and looking back i, I didn't handle it but because i didn't have the tools how to handle it I was never taught how to handle pressure or and my dad was old school you know what i mean would i have made got as far as i did without him probably not so now i can understand why he'd done it he was doing yeah. it for the best but he just went around it the wrong way a bit i'd do it different with the knowledge i know now but, but then was he was did he have that knowledge because obviously it, it's a different thing that's it, it. Did, you know no he didn't have the knowledge at the time he was doing for his best of his ability and what he knew yeah. at the time the best for me and i love him we speak every day yeah. well yeah sometimes i look and think not now dad <laughs> <laughs> call him back later what what did I'm trying to think with that because you do you see it don't you we're, we're talking about parents now yeah. and, you know i'm thinking look my dad didn't push me enough I, I, yeah I tell him all, you know and all that but what did that look like you're saying you, you didn't handle it well but you're a you're a you're a teenager with which is yeah emotions hormones everything else you're obviously so, was, was there was there a, i don't want to put words in your mouth but was there an not an arrogance but were you just like i'm obviously all right because i'm doing quite well for myself no definitely or, not that no, no. so what, what i meant by, by that sorry but to explain yeah. it if, if your dad's saying Michael, you need to be doing this. Yeah. Were you, how were you, you know, what did that look like? So, for instance, say, I remember one game, I'd, no, I won't say that game because it makes me look. <laughs> so, I was, say I was in a game yeah. and I'd scored three. Yeah. I scored the actual come away with the match ball when yeah. I'm younger, going yeah, through yeah. the youth teams and that. Then my dad said, you should have scored five, you should have scored six because oh. you missed them three. Oh, and then, where I should be made up, then all I'm thinking is, oh, I've missed them three or me, um, my dad's not happy with me yeah, instead of God, yeah. so if i had a bad game well even if i had a good game my dad would pick out the faults so right. it was never i could go i'd see my dad come to a game at times i think oh no because just the whole oh, demeanor changed then because he was there the pressure he'd put on me so it was tough it was really tough to be fair at times did i want to carry on playing football now did i hate it yeah and i was like amazing at it at the time but just because you're really good at something doesn't mean you were like loved it. But you're young. How do you, how do, you do it when you're like 10, 12, 13? You 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 don't know what to do. Like, dad, like you, yeah. We so we didn't have a car and we there uh, lived in Egbert. Schoolboy training was at Penny Lane then. Yeah. So we'd walk there and then walk That's back. Walk. And if I had a bad training session, that was the longest walk ever. Though. He'd walk in front of me and I'd be like walking behind him. And I knew if he was talking to me by where he'd walk. Oh. If he was walking in front of me, I'd go. Laughing, uh, but it's not good, is no, it? It's not good. No. Uh, yeah. I'm laughing because you're laughing. No, no. Looking back, it wasn't funny no, at the time. No. Uh, but now I can. Yeah, so now I want to. I want to try and educate parents more. I want to get into Finch Farm. I've spoke to the club about it, like educating parents about the pressure they put on kids and yeah. how to let's see what the kids do. They really want this. I know parents are going, I don't care they're doing it, but all right, if they're going to go down there, this is a better way to do it, better Absolutely. approach. Um, you just put a light bulb on in my head because my lad got an attic on Saturday and missed about four sitters. And I yeah. said, You should have had six. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but, like, You're one of them dads. Yes, no, no. You know what it was? His yeah. attitude. It weren't how yeah. it doesn't. It weren't, yeah. that, it weren't how well he played or how good it was. He was moaning at the referee. He moaned oh, okay. at the but you're like, no, I'll check myself now because that alarm bell went off when you. Yeah. That day, it, I've done it to my own son. Good. I remember driving back from a game, and he missed a few chances, and I was like. Ah. Like, oh no, that, that was just my dad looking at me. Like, I'm turning into my dad. We all have them moments, yeah. mate, where you go, you hear your dad's voice again and go, oh no. But my son, my son told me a funny story. Obviously, I had my problems, and my, my dad used to take my son to the game. And he said, He does what you used to, what he done to you, daddy. He'd be moaning at me. Yeah. He said, I missed a chance one time. He said, And I looked over, and he's like, ah. He said, He turned around, threw the Lucas O Lucas A bottle on the floor, it bounced up, and hit him in the air. <laughs> he said, I was laughing. Bit of karma. Yeah, Bit of exactly. Karma. Um, so you know, obviously he got he got into you know we full time at Everton then yeah. as a white team and introduced into the first team quite quite quickly really for straight away. Yeah. Um, so there. when I was at Little Show, we'd come yeah. home for half terms, end of terms. Yeah. And then when I come home, people would be resting. Everton would say, "Do you want to come in and play train with the first team?" So I'd be training when I was like fourteen, fifteen with the first team on me hot school holidays. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so... How did you find that? I'm 14, 15, I'm like full of confidence, no fear, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like, gets the ball. Like, how did you, because we, we had Wayne Newman in there, and he was like, yeah. yeah, I just, I went in and I thought, yeah. you know, some so things I'm, aren't great. But did you, levels I'm talking about, because well, obviously level wise, 15, and yeah, yeah. These, are, these are Premier League footballers well, at the time. One of my biggest, if not my best, attribute was my pace. So yeah. I knew no one around them would be quicker than me. So I could always get out of trouble. Yeah. I had a bad touch or that. And yeah, when it was, I wasn't scared. Like, yeah. I held my own. But the one thing I always struggled with, I'd like overthink. So I'd be in the ch changing rooms and I'd be like, I don't know what to say. And then I'm overthinking, so I don't say nothing. And oh. people then think, he's quite not rude, but he yeah. doesn't say much, does he? Yeah, yeah. But it's because I don't know what to say and I'm overthinking. It's like, so people used to take it the wrong way, maybe arrogance, but it's just that I was nervous and didn't know what to say. Yeah. Um, Anyone so, will be a Yeah, so then never, you pick on, not pick on you, but pick them a little bit. Yeah, and yeah. like character building, but never was boss, but he would like. I would have yeah, yeah, yeah. In a good way. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So you you made your debut with Man U. Man U, uh, yeah. Yeah. Not a bad stage to make your debut, no, is it? No, uh, in the tunnel, you're like Cantona, Beckham, Giggs. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but then at 17, I've been still going well. I'm still scoring the goals. Uh, the pressure hasn't come on yet because the goals are coming in. I'm still playing well. Yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm up for it. It's like get me on there. Like I'm invincible. You know, I'm, at the time, it. the youngest player in the Premiership. I'm gonna be if I get on that day. Yeah. Uh, and yet I got on halfway through the second half, two 0 down, but debut for the Blues, which at all traffic. yeah, dream of, don't you? Because there was a big buzz about. I don't know whether you would have noticed it, but there was a big buzz about you. So obviously being in England and yeah, things like that. And it was like we've got to, everyone's always looking for the young striker. Yeah, happy we're always. Well, they just one of our only scores going. Yeah, you had a great record. Well, that's it. I mean, the next Robbie Fowler because they had Robbie at the time, and up to then, yeah, I was like, yeah, I can do that. Mm. And then, obviously, didn't turn out the way we wanted it. But played for the club of love, scored a couple of goals, played a few games, played in two derbies. Done all right. Done some good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Your first goal, do you remember it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then. Chelsea away. <laughs> yeah. Yellow and black kit. Oh, best kit. Tremendous kit. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, just a relief because it took a while to uh, get that first goal. Yeah. I said before in my home debut against Sheffield, I think it was. I think got one assist, got a penalty. Diamond took it and he hit the bar. So I was if that if it, the dad gone in just a little bit, maybe things would have been changed yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Less pressure, the goal's gone in. Of course, yeah. A couple of games and you still haven't scored. You're supposed to be this new kid on the block scoring goals. You start yeah. to doubt yourself. Yeah. Little voices in your head like, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, so for it to score that first goal, it's like a relief. Would would have loved it to have been a Goodison, but I did get one at Goodison eventually, winning at Goodison end. So that was decent. That's what you want, mate. Right? Yeah. And on that day, Kinselska scored as well. So on the team sheet with Kinselska, the the two two at Chelsea, it's not bad. Yeah, not bad. Not I see his little thing he done with the club today. You can't watch the match at the minute because he's in you like Russia oh, or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But what a player he was. Oh, I think I played in his. Uh, 
He scored after the last game of the season in Sheffield, away at Sheffield, and played in that game. And played it was like, yeah, I was like, yeah. wow, yeah. He was like, amazing. He could have passed to me a couple of them, like, but I can't argue. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, what was he like in training? He was brilliant. He, yeah. People say he was the best player. It's probably him who have played on the same team as. But, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. He Again. was genuinely world class, yeah. wasn't he? On the, at the top of his game. Yeah. Nice fellow as well. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand him? Not much. No. <laughs> he come in here, we had him in the studio. Once, he, yeah. he, oh, he's a great, great fella, but you did have to like daily concentrate. Yeah. Um you scored your, your last goal for Evan at West Ham. West Ham, yeah. That was another two two as well, two, wasn't two. it? Yellow yeah. and black hit again. Was it? Was it yeah? Or was it all blue? Oh, Pedal probably shouting them in. I remember pulling off Rio and nodding it in back post. Lost him with a bit of movement in the box. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, yeah. Uh, obviously, I can remember all my goals. It's like, cause I'm, I'm, I used to go to sleep at night, listen to night games, know what I mean? Adrian Eve's just like, come on, get a goal. And just dream about playing. Thing, yeah. And I know it's like a bit corny, but that's what I did. I used to just dream about playing for Everton. And like, I was Everton man. It's not Everton's corny, not, is it? Cause no. that's, I mean, that's brilliant yeah. to hear you say it because, again, a lot of. A lot of players you're either dreaming of playing for other clubs, so it's great for you. I'll dream of playing for Everton, but you know, you, you went there and done it. Are you a bit, when you look back at your time at Everton, are you a bit disappointed you didn't score more goals given the weight? Because obviously, you were, you were someone who scored tons of goals. Is there anything you think you could have done differently that would have? Or was it the fact there was turmoil? Joe Royal was in oh, there, then no. he was gone. No, no, it was no, no. nothing to do with that. It was definitely okay. me. Uh, it took me a long time to get to terms with it, but yeah, like yeah. for long times I was disappointed, really disappointed and gutted and sort of half ashamed. And really? Yeah, and, and it took me to like... Why are you ashamed? Because I didn't do what I should... What I, and it's more what people thought. I didn't do what people thought I should do or what I was hopeful for. And so... For a long time, till I went to counselling and counselling brought it all out, and it was like so. Put people had asked me, or say you used to play for Evan, and the first thing I'd say is yeah, but I wasn't that good. It's like why? Why are you putting yourself down all the time? They took the counsellor to like pick me child or the part and pick this or part. Is that just a? Is that like a coping or a, or a like self preservation thing to go well? Because you. you you train with the first team at 14, 15, you're playing at Old Trafford when and you're, you, you you're 16 at Old Trafford or 17, 17, 17. you're Third scoring, for Everton, exactly, you're playing derbies, you've, you've scored in the Premier League, mm -hmm. you know, people get one, it's amazing, you know, you scored three goals, yeah, I'm just asking you, I'm just asking you that personally, because yeah. as a fan, like I said before, and we probably do this wrong, we still do it now, mm. we still, we, we do Shows every day and people are going, who's coming through? Can, can yeah, they yeah, score yeah. goals? And you're like, it is difficult to step up and all that. But you, you were so prolific. So I think people did put more pressure on you to do it. But I'm just wondering. No one put as much you. pressure as myself on, on myself. You know what I mean? It's like, so when I say it took me a long time. So I, just, I don't know, because I just didn't do what I should have. And everyone, I feel as though I let people down, family down. And... People say we'd cut off our like I go the game and people say I'd cut off my left arm to do what you've done. I'm yeah. like, I it took me a long time to see to it realize to realise it. Know what I mean? Because I was just in self and I was just like in a bad place mentally probably from it all. Because you at, back then it was just get on with it sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't go the game. I fell out of love with the game. Shame to go to Goodison. If I'd go, I'd go with a cap on, collars up, just so no one would recognise me. Because I'd be like, oh, that's all in my head, know what I mean? Yeah. Crazy. It's the worst thing, isn't it? Yeah. Your own head is worse than... Yeah, when my counsellor says people. the worst person you'll ever talk to is... You, the most important person yeah. you'll ever talk to is yourself. Yeah. Um, and that's so true. Yeah. It is so true. And now I go out work the club, I walk around with my kids on bad on, so it's completely changed, you know what I mean? But it was a dark place back then when I look back, you know what I mean? And but, how difficult was it to leave then? Because you had a couple of loans, didn't you? Off, yeah. off to Manchester City and... You settle, seemed to settle a bit at Wolves. Was, was it a big, difficult decision to leave Everton? Or was it, or were you just... I was pushed, Danny. I was at to go. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Is that what it was? It was yeah. like you're going. Simple as that. Yeah, yeah. So I was supposed to go to Portsmouth first, but I couldn't agree personal terms, and it was miles away as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was Alan Ball, so... Yeah. But uh, Walter Smith, we fell out. Did we, you? Yeah, so I was going. You weren't the only one. Yeah, yeah. And it... it 
No, it was a bit like I've been at this club since I was eight, and you've only just come and you're. But it manages. It's the way the club works. And I went to Wolves, and it was a fresh start. It was away from the city, away from like the fishbowl. Yeah. I was out the fishbowl now. Yeah. Away, I can go and enjoy me football, and then if I want to get away from that, I can come back to Liverpool for the weekend. Or, yeah, yeah. And I really enjoyed it until I sort of got left out, and then I still didn't know how to cope with like getting left out and all yeah. that. So. Probably didn't start looking after myself as enough, enough, right. and then that was it. And then, ah, uh, you've been here, you dropped here, uh, just then self doubt again, and On that yeah, drinking too much, not looking after myself, just that's just a cope. Yeah, to sleep. I mean, I started drinking just to shut the head off to be able to sleep, like we've we've heard recently in the in the media and in the papers about Delhi saying he mm. took sleeping tablets. Well, I took drinks and switch off to just shut the head off. Know what I mean? Uh, Do you think enough's done to to help younger players like yourself? You'd obviously you'd you know you've been in at such a young age and you've had a lot of cope with already, and then you moved on because yeah. a manager comes in who's been here two minutes and thinks they know better than what you yeah. are there, and you've moved on again. And, and I mean, you are fair to fair to be fair to Will Smith is I wasn't I wasn't doing it on the pitch so it was time to probably move on yeah. for me as well uh, but back then no, no way there wasn't I remember mm -hmm. we got uh, John Mayer I think he's at Man U now he's mm -hmm. like massive at Man director U now. Of football. director of football mm -hmm. he's at John, U John Moore's university at the time Yeah, I think he was doing sports psychology or something and uh, he come in and I got to know him and he, we had a chat one time I just broke down crying to him it's like okay. the pressures and all that Uh so I put on the PFA up when I was 20 or 21 I said I'm, I'm done I don't want to play no more I hate it it's like I can't do it no more wow. and he was like no Mike come on you can get through it and all that but I just hated it just hated it really did that is mad I know for people who listen I know I've scored two on my debut for Wolves against Man City live on Sky and then like a couple of, couple of weeks later I'm like I can't do this really yeah so that bit it's mad, is that isn't while it? you were still on loan, or was that when you gone permanent? No, we're gone permanent. Gone permanent. Yeah, yeah. Why, why do you think that was then? If you've scored two goals in a few weeks later, you, I don't know you, what it was. It's just, you just were you falling out of love with it? Was it just? Was it? I think I fell out of love with it, like earlier than I thought. Like the golden years were like me young teens. Yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. Then was it because I wasn't didn't get it at my own? My own way now when I was a pro and people were just as quick and that maybe and it's just frustration yeah um, whereas other players might have got their head down knuckled down and trained hard and all lives like oh, it's not for me. I don't know not yeah, that it's that's not for difficult. me it's just yeah it's just like back then it was you finished training you're gone by one o'clock yeah. now the day it's all threes fours fives in the in yeah. the evening know what I mean totally different and now. do you think that's better because you haven't got as much time to think, maybe. Yeah, and also, it's like, they're all athletes now, aren't they? It's like, geez, you, they're an athlete before they're a footballer. Mm. Like, they're all fast, they're all strong. They're all jump. It's like, wow, imagine playing in that these days. You wouldn't be playing against the likes of Razor or the Julian Dix now, would you? <laughs> yeah, but then, the natural talents that you had would have been enhanced yeah. by all the stuff there. That's doing it. diet. Yeah. You know, uh, you've got all the, the, the bras that they wear, but monitor yeah. everything. You've got all, you know, the weights, the programs. And the, and the sports care side of it, exactly. the psychology, which, which is, is the main thing. That's all I would have needed to just yeah. change me. Because I had counsel and changed me a whole, like, just a few little things changed me, mindset, me thinking, everything. It's like now it's like I'm a different person. Do you think if you'd have had that when you. We, like, go back when you were playing for Everton yeah. and you'd obviously scored some goals and you were in and around it. Was that doubt there yeah. for you? So yeah. So this is this is how my thinking would go if I play. So say I'm playing and I've had a good game, I've scored. Say I look up and it's seventy minutes. Yeah. And I've scored. I'm having a good game. Yeah. I'd be like, come on, take me off now in case I make a bad touch or I miss a chance. That's my head. Like, I, do, I want to go off now because I'm having a good game and I don't want to spoil it. Don't worry, really. Yeah, and then if I've had a good game and it's finished, I'm like, thank God, like, oh, I wish we didn't have a game next week because I might it's mess up. Try and live. Oh, uh, yeah, so that's just pure self-doubt, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, so a counsellor or a, psycho a sports psychologist would have helped me with that. that up, yeah. yeah, so I'm like, oh, like when the game is finished, I'm like, thank God for that. Whew. Don't have to go through that till next Saturday, you know. And you and you you play you you like at the time probably one of the best strikers in the country, yeah. people the best for your age, and yeah. 
but I'm I'm looking at clocks. And, oh. Was there no one there who was? Was there no one there who was picking you up though to yourself? Because it. it no, I don't mean blowing smoke. No, up your ass, she you know, would, but and people who were around, you know, whatever. But what I mean is for that, and, and clearly looking mm. at the face, there wasn't. But that might have been all you needed. It was would that, have been. Listen, you're doing great. Keep it going, you know. Yeah. And, without the pressure. Yeah, yeah. Like the amount of pressure. The, the... You're making me feel frustrated for you. <laughs> no, it's not me. no, I don't want anyone feeling sorry for me because I'm no, not sorry. No, I'm not no, sorry. I'm yeah, just yeah. thinking of all the goals I could have been celebrating. <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> but yeah. It is what it is, you know what I mean? It's yeah. uh, So now I feel as though it's I should go out there and tell my story it's a bit great. more. Yeah. People are okay talking about my career and this time, but what about the other side? Because I don't think I've mentioned about this before, about the, being on the pitch and actually wanting it to be over, you know what I mean? Like I want to come back to that. Yeah. Go for him and come, because that's it. Dead into, I think it's massive, this, absolutely, because I think you've got the opportunity to help other people. And, and help people understand, by the way, not just... Because I think we've all got it, we do... <laughs> As football supporters, that's what we do yeah. at times. We're all capable of it. Someone I work very closely with is very capable of uh, not seeing a footballer as a human at times because I think we're all conditioned that way. You're, yeah. a, you're a commodity. When we go in and sit down in the ground, you're Michael Branch from FIFA. So on FIFA, yeah. you're 90, your pace is 95, whatever, whatever, and you're perfect every single time. Yeah, yeah. It's not. It's not like that. No. It's not like that. You're a human being getting up on the Saturday. We don't know your pulling on, lemon yeah. shirt on and thinking, "Oh my God, I don't want to mess up." Yeah. And you see, I I'm not going to name names, but you see players now who misplace a pass and they're gone. You may as well take them off because they're literally. Yeah. You can tell they're thinking, I, "I've misplaced that pass." Now well, you think, mate, you've got 86 minutes left. You'll get another chance. Well, the first, the yeah. first ball I got played into me, the pressure I put myself all night. I'd be thinking, first touch, first touch. First. first ball I get into control and pass it, two touch, control and pass it. I know they come into me and it bounced off, or they give the ball. That'd be it for the game. I'd be like, oh fuck, that's the, just that's. I've already played the, the video forward. I'm gonna have a bad touch now. My, my whole game is ruined. And it's just all played in my head. That's not reality. It's just like it's mad where I should be thinking. Right, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna spin. I'm gonna get in. I'm gonna have a chance. I'm gonna score. But I'm going negative. I never miss a goal again. Yeah, yeah. I never miss a goal again. Yeah. yeah. So similar. It's easy said than done, though, yeah. Michael, isn't it? So, you, I mean, I don't know how people cope today with social media because I've done a few a few pieces and say I've done this piece and there was a hundred great comments and I got two like negative ones. All I could think about was them negative ones. I'll be honest, I'm mate. Kill I, them. We do the same thing. Yeah. I'm the same. People yeah. can go to me. That interview's incredible. Interview's incredible. Interview's yeah. incredible. You're an obhead. <laughs> interviewing, and I just go, oh, why is he calling me? That doesn't know me. Yeah. I I, I, like, what have I said? Like, or, or it's just my opinion. The, the greatest one is if you go, like, I don't know. Uh, can't watch my mind gone blank. Think, like, you know, Dominic Calvert Lewin is a, is a great centre forward when he's fit and all that. Yeah. And people will come on and, like, no, he's not. He's always injured. He's only done this. And it's like, look, that's just my opinion. Yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not like Jesus. I'm not like or whoever. I'm not the 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 be all and end all of football. Yeah. That's just my opinion. Going, oh, I really like him. Why can't you just go? Oh, I don't like him for this mm-hmm. reason, and then we move on. Because if we were in a if we were in a pub or we were sat here, and I went, oh, I I think he's better. You might just go, oh, right, well, I like him, and we just talk it out and yeah, then yeah. get on with me. Social media is. You whip me or you're not bad, yeah. isn't it? And that's it. That's and so, it. like, it's yeah. So I mean, back, that back then it was like you get the papers of a Sunday and look for your little nut scored at the, the rating, report. Yeah, the in the paper. <laughs> Why is he what only giving? Me... <laughs> and did that bang your head out if it was yeah. like a, a, a six or a yeah. five or a ten or something? You like? So they they Prentice at the Echo. I saw so a little thing against him for a long time. And mm. It's like oh, he's just doing his job. <laughs> I mean, he's just let it go. And it's just how he sees it. Yeah. But yeah. But I've, I'm you going back to like uh, saying about you being at the game, and I've done it myself. I've like called players out. I'm like, oh wow, you're turning into like what you hated. Yeah. But you yeah. you get you get caught up. It's in emotion. The, yeah. Football's emotion. It makes us all idiots at yeah, times, some, doesn't yeah, it? It makes us, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's a game of football. Yeah. And I, you know. I'm not too far from here, it's called it more, you know, it's more important than life mm. or, you know, not a case of life or death, more important. It actually isn't, is it? It's no. a game of football. We love it. It should be somewhere we go to enjoy. There's pressures you want to do well. We all live vicariously through footballers, don't we? We all live It's that thing, isn't it? That that um, study was done where when the team wins, it's we won. Yeah. 
But if some, if you lose, they go out. Do you out Everton get on? Oh, they got beat. They, they got, got beat one yeah. 0 You know, got, we yeah. won, but they lost. Yeah, and it's perfect. like that. The psychology of that is is it is it is what it is. You don't. You know, you left walls again. Just looking through your loans at Brad, uh, at Reading and Hull. Then went to to Bradford and done all right at Bradford, mm-hmm. seemingly. Yeah. And then looked like you found your feet a little bit of Chester City for a bit. I'm saying that looking at your numbers. I'm not saying that of how you were feeling. But <laughs> like, what was that journey? So you just said before, well, it was Everton, and then it was Wolves, and at the time, Wolves weren't Wolves weren't Premier League, really. No, no. So just for people, because now they are obviously. Yeah, yeah. And then you feel like you're going down. Is just that dropping down? Is that yeah. your self esteem going as yeah, well? Yeah, for sure, definitely. Uh, by now, drinking more and that's just turning up, just turning up. Where yeah, yeah. Uh, and was it that thing where you know, when you play a game and beforehand you're thinking nah, I'll, I'll, I'll imagine you just said you didn't think like that but to be would there be some games where half two you're thinking I'll score today you know these aren't very good I'll do it and then you take that wrong touch and then all of a sudden you start getting frustrated and thinking I should be doing better than this should be... or by that time were you just literally going it was I just need to I was get like the numb game. by then yeah just numb it was like Turn off and play, and and what? It's like, I'm a, yeah. So it's the thing, and it's not the right attitude. It's but it was just where I was mentally. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, and I, I didn't want to be feel like that. Mm. But at times I just couldn't shake it. You know what I mean? You'd be like dragging yourself to go training, <laughs> and then it lead into the game. And obviously, if you're not performing through the weekend training, it's going to carry it into the game. Mm. Uh, so then one day I just phoned the manager, the chairman up at Chester and said, uh, the year and a half left on my contract, said I'm not coming in no more. Done. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, How old were you at this point? I think I was about 26, 27, something like that. Some stuff. Yeah. But you, again, I'll, we, I'll sit here and go 27. Wow, yeah, you're going, yeah, I'm 20 years in, mate, or, you know, nearly yeah. enough. Yeah, like yeah. Like saying before, those kids who were starting six, seven, yeah, 27, well, been, 20 years. Yeah, 20 doing years of football. Pressure all yeah. the time. Yeah, and uh, so say it was say it was twenty eight mm. for a push. So there's twenty years, and uh, stop playing. Another not a great decision, but I've got a uh, history of making bad choices, not thinking stuff through and just going with it. Impulsive. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Don't think. Think. Like, I don't. I'm not now. I step but back you wear, away. Yeah. 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 Uh, so then I'm sitting at home. What do I do now? <laughs> I tell you what. I'll go and do a coaching course because all footballers Think go into coaching. <laughs> yeah. Nothing, I'm doing what people expect you to do. Yeah. Again, people pleasing. Do a coaching course. Then, now what? Oh, I've got a friend in Australia. Let's move to Australia. Let's move all the kids to Australia. No, let's go on a six week holiday to Australia. Yeah. Then we're there. Let's stay for two years. I'm like, what's going on here? And it's just like, they, that's that's where I'm at. Like, irrational. Not thinking stuff through. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we went on a six week holiday and ended up staying two years, got our house sold, family to pack the container, send the stuff over. There we go. Oh. Uh, That's a bummer. And that was a happy time. Was it? Was, yeah. Were you okay there, yeah? Yeah, because it was sort of I played in the premiership, so and it was in Australia. Yeah. Could get a job easy enough, could play part time with sort of mates, say, yeah, any playing sort of, and coaching. Yeah. I was enjoying it again, no pressure. Yeah. And for the little, little, little couple of years, 18 months, it was good. Yeah. Yeah. And then money pressures come in and stuff back home was happening. Because we had some houses rented out and it was like, what should we do? So well, let's go home. Because we were on a two year visa, let's go home, sort all our stuff out, and then mm. we'll move properly back. Yeah. Come back, no job, mortgages. Da, 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 da. Then obviously, made another. Really bad decision. On to that, it's obviously such a, it's a difficult, yeah, difficult thing when you've come from where you were. But how does that come about? Does that come about from just it's a, it's like a, everything, money pressures? It's a couple of things. Um, mix them with the wrong crowd. I think I'm not sure whether it's still relevant today, but back then it was like footballers and drug dealers. They went hand in hand. They went to the same clubs. They were in the same bars. Evertonians, <laughs> uh, so you you mix in the same circles. Uh, was it ego? Maybe a bit of ego back then with me as well. Being random, I'm only young, easily impressed. Uh, 
and then financial worries, and then you get you your mates hear your problems. Well, you think they're your mates, but they hear your problems. You're on the way out. Okay, we can do this. Start small. Next thing, you know, you're in above your head. You don't know what you're doing, and the rest is history, as they say. But do I look back and regret it? Regret the actual being involved in the drugs, not going away. It sort of, it probably saved my life going away. Really did. Just give me a little uh, little time out to reset. Get some counselling. Got counselling there. She saved me life without a doubt. Uh, come out. Still not fully fully uh, fully right, but a better understanding of why I was thinking the way I was thinking. Uh, so I got out in two thousand and five, and yeah. Yeah, it's tough, isn't it? It, was tough. it wasn't easy. I was going to say, what? You know, an ex Premier League footballer, and then the next minute, yeah. you didn't, you didn't try. I mean, what, what was that? What was that like? Um, first day, scary. Mm. Well, I got, I got banged up. I got remanded, so never been in trouble before. Yeah. First time, remanded straight away. So we got locked in the cell. <laughs> of a night time. Everyone was already behind the door, so the next morning was the first time I'd be on the wing. So, right, like, yeah. and they opened the doors like shit. What am I gonna? I'm, like, it just looked like a zoo, just kids, not kids, but like running around everywhere. It's like oh, I can't do this. <laughs> like I'm not meant to be here, <laughs> even though I was because yeah. I'd, I'd done uh, the crime. But uh, lucky enough, there was I, I had a touch with a, a prison guard in there. He used to play at Everton with me. Don't say his name, mm. and uh, he moved me onto another wing where some people knew me, and uh, they sort of looked after me for a bit. Uh, yeah, and then from there I worked in the gym, kept myself fit, got myself fit, and then lucky enough one of the day, so I was remanded for four months. So in them four months, I wasn't sure what my sentence was going to be. Yeah, so yeah. I was still thinking I might get a year, I might even get like out, and then I got seven. I was like, what? So. That knocked me for six. I thought I'm not doing seven years. I might as well just go and top myself or something. Uh, and what's it called? Lucky enough, one of the uh, one of the gym screws officers. Sorry, uh, he seen me mood had really dropped, so we pushed me up the line to see a counselor. And then that was it. It's like once I started seeing this counselor a couple of times a week, it was like. You've got two choices, either be a victim, just poor you, you shouldn't be here, you shouldn't be here, or change your mindset, you're here, you've got to do it, what's the best you can do while you're here? So she just got me, just changed my mind, me uh, thinking a little bit, and that was it. Said, I'm going to be the fittest I can be, I'm going to get me a accountancy course sent in, I want to study, da, 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 da. be the best dad when I get out, uh, whatever. And you know what? It wasn't too bad after that. Listen to the matches on the radio. <laughs> 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 I mean, what's that like when you you sit down with with the council? Was it difficult at first to open up, or were you were you that were you that low that it was just a case of just, you know what someone's going to listen to me? It was just I don't know. She just peeled it right back, and I was just like, I think I just cried for the first couple of sessions, just yeah. literally sobbed. Not <laughs> the then, first time for a while. Properly, yeah. yeah. In front of someone, yeah. I do yeah, behind yeah. me door all the time. Yeah. Um, and to, to not blame yourself for everything, mm. like give yourself a break, put that mm. stick down. It's like, uh, it's okay, know what I mean? You don't have to keep beating yourself up over it now. Mm. It's all done. Uh, that was the main thing, just giving myself a break. The kids still love me, because it was like, the kids don't love me no more, this, that, and the other. But it's just all about me, and just, she just changed me thinking, and yeah. And I have seen it for a, a bad session for about eighteen months or something. And just, just grew as a person. She made me realise stuff that's gone on when I was younger. It still affects me now, and we we dealt with them, which I've never done before. It's like, and I'll be honest, I used to resent my dad because what he put me through. And we I sat down with him and I explained to him. Did you? He gave me a hug and said, "Why didn't you just talk to me?" And like we're best mates now. It's like, it's just, well, it's just like, jeez. So it's just talking and like... Not having them tools though, is it, at that time? No, that's you, it. Get maybe a bit intimidated yeah. or whatever, so how do you, how do you say, um, 
And he, he's evolved as well as a as a man as a parent. He's realised it's not all about old school stuff. It's yeah. yeah. So it was, yeah. it was like I was carrying a rucksack around, and I could just like each time I take a rock out, that one's done now, and then the next one, and then nice, eventually yeah. it's like. But it still took a while. I still had to see it a couple of times when I got out with the mm. Everton stuff. Like I don't want to go to the ground. I think people will da, 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 da. I'll be known as not Michael Branch who played Everton. Michael Branch, the drug dealer. Yeah. Convicted drug dealer, but again, that's just me doing other people's thinking for them. Yeah. Uh, but then now I'm, I'm at the club and I'm helping young people, trying just trying to help. Did you realize? Would you have said before you sat down with that counselor that you had mental health issues? Yeah, definitely. You have. Yeah, yeah. Did yeah, you ever talk to anyone about it? No, never. No. I knew something wasn't right. Mm. Like people shouldn't have the thoughts I was having. Mm. No, no one should. But yeah, uh, yeah, it's tough. I haven't really talked about it that much. But, like once run away from home when I'm young and then running away a couple of times because I just didn't want to be there. You know what I mean? With the pressures from the football. Yeah, just all because. Just because you're good, you've got a talent. It shouldn't be a bad, you know what I mean? You should still be able to enjoy it. That's yeah. a massive lesson. I think that's a massive lesson to, to anyone. Because it, 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 again, your dad's probably carrying his own frustrations that maybe he didn't do as, go as far as what he felt he could have done and he yeah. doesn't want you to do it. But then that's you're a totally different person and you need that yeah. that guidance. But mm-hmm. the truth is no one to help you. Yeah. That's it. Maybe. And, but we're all, we were all learning and we're still mm. all learning. All we can do is if, maybe apologise if we need to to people and then go make it right. You know what I mean? Me and my dad, like I don't want this to come out as like my dad's a bad person. He was doing what he thought was best for me. Mm. He's only ever had all the kid, all these kids' uh, interest, bless the heart. Yeah, yeah. And now, now he, as I say, he's my best mate and he's a great granddad. Uh, and it might be a bit tough for him to hear this, but I do want him to know. I do love him, you know what I mean? And I think it's that, yeah, you'd right. If listen, I wouldn't sit here and go, oh, well, you'd probably be fine with it because you might be, it might take him back a little bit, but at least you're able to speak about it. You've, you have made up, you, you're saying yeah. you love him, you, you're in constant, you speak to him every day, you mm. know, even if sometimes you swear him <laughs> and all of that, you know, he's his granddad and everything. And it, it is, like I said before, he's. <laughs> He didn't know. No, do you know what I mean? He doesn't yeah. know at that time. You, we do, we we do get lost, don't we? Yeah. Everything's through our own. We try, and, and we're trying to educate ourselves, and we're trying to do that thing of like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm new age man or woman yeah. or whatever, whatever you are. I can see it from everyone's point of view, but we all look through our own lens, definitely, don't we? And, yeah. and therefore, if he's if he has got that inside, it would reflect on you. And, yeah. And if you haven't got someone. Who could near to you and go, well, he's only doing it because of that or whatever, whatever. Yeah. It might not have made any difference, but it might have, and that's the thing. But, yeah. it, but at least you're like saying, well, I've gone past that now. Yeah, it? I mean, it's, uh, plenty of people who should, should imagine or watch this. And if one parent can think, you know what, maybe I'm a bit like his dad, maybe I should lay off a little bit there or that, then it's been worth it, you know what I mean? I don't believe I've gone through all this just to just not talk about it. No, listen, it's yeah. my, it's in, it is brave to sit there and talk about something that's obviously very, very difficult for you. You you touched on it before. Um Delhi was yeah. speaking last week, obviously. He's had a lot of he's had incredibly um difficult stuff gone on in his life. Um but he's talking more about how he's the stuff that he kept inside, obviously he's talking about the stuff he suffered and riding around with drugs and, his, yeah. and doing this, that and the other. But obviously the role that social media plays and that pressure as well and, and people making those judgments about him without knowing no, the documentary. I don't know whether you've ever seen it. The Spurs one all yeah. or nothing, but she all seen the clips with Josie Mourinho and he, he called him lazy, lazy. And all of that. And he, but then said he apologised a week later, but it was never put anywhere. Yeah. So people then have that perception, I was lazy and I'm, yeah. I, I love me hand off either. I was like, He's got. He's, he's been like an unbelievable footballer. Yeah. Like, what's wrong with him? Can he just not be asked? He's got too much money, whatever. And then he comes out and says all that. Yeah. That it, we have as a as a people who love football and love the game. 
supporters and talking yeah. about and people who are in uh, we all have to take a little bit of responsibility do you think of, of how we of how we view people and what we're saying about people yeah do you think that, that's accurate without a doubt i mean even everything i've gone through i was i've sort of questioned them last year yeah, and as a player since yeah, that yeah, yeah. and i shouldn't because i've been through there but you you you're forgetting you, you get your emotions start yeah, and you get yeah. all involved but now it makes sense, doesn't it? But we're just like focused on he's not doing it. Mm. He's paid to do that. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And it's like there's so much going on. And then it's just in general life, we don't know what anyone's going through, do we? Like bus driver could or taxi driver could be having a bad day. We don't know what's going on. It's like but we we're all guilty of it, aren't we? As a society, we all need to work on it a little bit more. Just give people but football fans aren't we it's too easy isn't it it's yeah. too easy to go ah, whatever and just like bank your spleen and social media's made it dead easy for yeah. people to do that isn't it it's like sometimes we don't engage our brain before we say something and it, it comes out and it's like that person at the other end of that reading it we were talking about it before where yeah. 100 positive comments one or two negative you're going you know what like you feel yourself like and it, it is a case yeah. of work and, and yeah listen you see all the things of like, oh, well, oh, that person might have been having a bad day, or yeah. they might just not. Like, and it, it's dead difficult to do, there's make no mistake about it. But do you think him, the fact that he's come out and spoke about that, do you think that's a huge because I, I work with people who addictions and everything mm-hmm. for 12 years in social services, and I was saying, like, it's such a brave thing to do because, especially like football's very much out, like, you're, yeah. you know, you're brave talking about it today, yeah, yeah. that thing of like the self-doubt and oh my god i'm not good enough yeah, yeah. Doing that. It's, like, it is a brave thing but it could it could help so many people couldn't no, it no it has and to be fair would i have reached out to yourselves if he hadn't done it maybe not mm. he's given me the sort of like bit of confidence bit of confidence do. say you know what it's okay sort of thing and i've said it before but it's been in interviews sort of okay. you know what i mean just i would want to stop playing and that but to actually say it out loud and it's going out no it's it just seems a bit different are you okay talking about it no i'm fine talking about it yeah um uh, i was gonna say something and i've lost my thought it'll come back to me it'll come back to you yeah but well, like, yeah. it is it is uh, again like yeah it was well received obviously with support and absolutely rightly so it should have been received but yeah because you just said it none of us have a clue what's going on no so we we do again i go back to like the 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 PlayStation, you know, you put it on, you expect, <laughs> you expect them to be that pace, that like computer generated footballer that isn't got emotions, he just runs out and he yeah. plays and gets nine out of ten or five out of ten of his day apprentice marking him. Um, yeah. And then, and, and that's it. And he goes home and we can say what we want, but he's all right, you know, and all of that. But you, like, I'd, human being. Yeah, and then, but if people would have seen me playing at Evan, you think, oh, he's played, he's missed a couple of chances or whatever. He's. Mm. He's gone home, whatever. And I'd go home and be able to sleep because I'd be replaying that over and over on a loop, on a loop all night. Like, you just, I, like, it's just crazy. It's not what you people think, you know what I mean? Like, oh, I'm not going out tomorrow because it's that or the other. And... If people think footballers don't care, they've got loads of money. Yeah. They miss chances, might be you missing a chance or whatever. They're not asked. We're, yeah. we're suffering for the whole weekend because we've lost. They don't yeah. care. They drive home in a big car, do whatever, mm. whatever, whatever. Quite no, clearly not the case. I mean, don't get me wrong. Sometimes you've been out after the game, but as well, it's like. You've got to have downtime. You've got to have downtime. So, like, I drink to forget or to just stop them at the head, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I haven't said it. I don't think I've said it openly, but like, I'm in recovery. And uh, I think it's like, I used to not want to say it out loud and people close to me know that but it's like yeah i am and that's that's the way it is and i'm better for it and i'm not ashamed i used to hide it but then again that's just my head telling me don't tell people because people will be talking about you this that and the other but i'm not bothered no more you know what i mean well i try to be as much <laughs> as i can seven seventy five percent of the time i'm not bothered yeah but uh if it helps one other person to think you know why he said he's in recovery i'm gonna i am and I need help going to it or this, that, and the other. I mean, they can reach out to other people, or so yeah, so it's a knock on effect. What well, Delhi coming out saying it it's made me come out and say it. Someone else might say it. Who knows? You got good support, I have, yeah, because that's all that matters, isn't it? Yeah, people, people can at the end of the day, some faceless person with an egg on Twitter 
having a go at you because of whatever. Yeah. It doesn't actually mean anything as long as you've got the support. No, that's from it. the people who love you and you love them. Really, that's all we need. We're, no, I have a big the problem we've got is social media's made us made us think everything's much bigger than what it is. Oh, uh, and, and we are. Think back to when you started playing football, just that time, not example, like put getting in your yeah. head at that, but the people who really mattered with the with the five or ten people you you hung around with your mates, mm-hmm. might have been your dad, your your uncle, your aunt, whatever. They were your, they were your group. Mm-hmm. It didn't matter what someone three streets down thought because you might yeah, yeah. didn't see it. They must have thought you were a divvy or whatever. Yeah, it's just your mates. Social media now means that we're looking for approval from anyone yeah. all over the world, and we ain't gonna get it because there's people who are, like to be abusive, like to hide behind, so yeah. might be having a bad time themselves, whatever. So as long as you feel like you've got support then yeah and, and you can say it now and that's that's great that you've got to the place where you can go yeah i had, I had an issue but you know what dealing with it and, yeah. and people are supporting me that's yeah. that's a massive thing i can put my head on the pillow tonight and it doesn't run away with me <laughs> you know what i mean so it's good get up early get the gym i know i, know I have to exercise i have to exercise first thing in the morning like i have to exercise before say eight o'clock to yeah. start the day right? routine yeah get some routine <laughs> that's my again that plays into and then as yeah in, as in I, I am you know ocd or whatever it is i need to do this this and this but that you had a, you had a routine though for, for so long don't forget whether you like the and in prison things. as well and then you had prisoners yeah, give routine. you the routine people yeah. go off you know like, so you see a lot of footballs go off the rails when you exactly. finish because there's no routine like oh, do what I want now. the football Gascoigne you know yeah. one of the greatest footballers yeah. suffered with self-doubt all his life mm. drink everything you know without that it's, it's great that you've actually got that moving on to that obviously Everton in the community yeah how did that come about Um. so Everton first sorry first of all you said something it was a throwaway comment before and I seen it on me me notes before accountancy oh yeah so you started getting so You're doing an accountancy Yeah, course. so I've done uh, my AAT when I was away. Uh, I got it sent in, the PFA paid for it and sent it in. So I was doing distance learning. Uh, I'd have a, be able to phone my tutor. If I was stuck or anything, he'd yeah. send in mock exams. I'd do them, send them out to get marked. Were and you then, always bright? Matt, yeah. Matt, yeah, yeah. I'm poor with English and spelling. <laughs> <laughs> it's normally one or the other, yeah, though, yeah. isn't it? With a lot of and do you know what it is? I don't know whether it's something to do with my thinking, but... I just love the way like one plus one always equals two. There's no grey area, so it's like it's got to be that. My wife's a mathematician. Yeah, like, oh. and that's the thing she says. Yeah. With English, it can be. It can oh, be well, any, oh yeah. Michael, it's eighty three percent, and yeah. someone else in the room might give it ninety one. Yeah, Matt, no, oh, Mike, that's the right answer. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's just really there's good. no there's a right and a wrong answer. There's no like grey area with us. Right, report on this. I'm like, yeah. what? <laughs> just give me a yeah or a no. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, so. Um, then I got to Kirk and got home, got day release, so I could then go out to a, a, a exam centre and sit my exams. Okay. So I ended up getting qualified, worked in the accountancy firm for a little bit when I come out, which was good. Then I realised sort of office work wasn't for wasn't me. <laughs> uh, and then while I was away, I haven't kept in touch, soft touch. Nice, uh, yeah. Phone calls with Henry Mooney, who used to work in the community. Great fella. Yeah, Henry amazing. Great fella, yeah. And then, uh, so, when I was at Kirkham, I could also get a job release two days a week, so I'll come and work for Everton yeah. in the community. Yeah, and then, uh, when I stopped at the accountancy, we're still volunteering a little bit with the community, and then they said, you want to come in for an interview? Next thing, got the job, and four years in now. Brilliant, enjoying yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> difficult. It's obviously very no. Good. It's again, a, you're in a very difficult. Yeah, no. It's, you have your. It's tough. It's isn't tough. It? You know what the city's like, and mm. we were sort of dealing with kids who the schools have kicked out. So yeah, yeah it's, it's all, the tough kids. Yeah. Know what I mean? But we get the odd win, and mm. they they make it worth it. Um, I've just moved over projects now. Uh, home is where the heart is, which is a residential oh, house. We have uh, we have four young people staying there who were homeless or about to be made homeless come with us we give them life skills stay with us for six to 12 months then we move them on to their own places so it's amazing that's but yeah that's it, really good there's a huge thing there with and i i found this in social services the, the amount of kids who I, I can't believe i still can't believe in the question yeah. my own children as to like did you do this in school i used to come home and say did it is there anywhere in the curriculum where you're taught like basically how to cook and i don't mean home economics where yeah. you make a spaghetti bolognese or you, you come home with a victorious but i mean <laughs> putting beans in a tin and, and yeah. you know out of a tin on a thing and and 
bank. How do I bank? Exactly. How do it's I, crazy, isn't it? You know, it's uh, because there was so many young people I was working with who they'd leave, like they'd be kicked out of home mm-hmm. because they, for whatever reason, their parents were had, had addiction yeah, issues. Yeah. So they'd be at, and they get put in some, and they'd have a, they wouldn't have a clip. No, no. They'd be like. Um, pot noodle. I was like, no, no, that is not food. Yeah, yeah. Nothing that's dust is food. You can't <laughs> just put kettle, you know, both, kettle both on it. it and that's it. Um, I just, I can't believe that it isn't a thing that should be. I personally believe you should be every week for your yeah. whole schooling. Well, definitely. So you I get mean, up and see how you survive so in we, the world. We do come across that a lot. Mm. Uh, just basic life skills like budgeting the money to go and get food, yeah. and then and even hygiene and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, wow, yeah. what's going on here? Like, since I worked there, I must have just been walking around with blinkers on in the city because I didn't realise how poor some people are in the mm. city, you know what I mean, and what how hard they have it. So I see young kids. And um, it's getting worse, let's get, be honest. Yeah, you know, I mean... The country. Um, we had kids with no food, you know what I mean? It's like, in you know, the summer holidays and mm. knowing COVID because they went in school, we would go literally driving around delivering food. Um, Which yeah. again is unbelievable, then, isn't it? A lot, we, a lot of people we're fine with the homeless who get referred is once the parents stop getting money for them when you turn 18 leave education like yeah. we're not getting no more money for you your cost us now off you go yeah, yeah. so for seven just because it doesn't you don't class as homeless just because you're on the streets it's if you haven't got it somewhere regular to stay or your own room yeah. sort of bed so there's a lot just sofa surfing it's terrible isn't it and yeah. you think you're like young people like city, yeah. and it's difficult isn't it because like you just said the parents as well listen some some could have done better and have made better choices of course yeah. but for, for other people there is no choice and, and those young people you know you see people on the streets and it's, you know blows your mind and yeah. the winter freezing isn't yeah. it in the winter and you're just like oh my god someone's sleeping outside now we've done the sleep in a Goodison lane on yeah, the, you know concrete floor and well that's the, the base the funds for the homicide the house, the horses so. yeah and that's difficult, but we're in, you're in a stadium, you've got to sleep. Yeah. The people who, that's Imagine their that. life, it's yeah. incredible, isn't it? Yeah. You reckon there's like 300 uh, average every night who are homeless in the city. It's like crazy. That's mad. Yeah. We've come from somewhere, haven't we? Yeah. Blows my mind. Blows me but mind. obviously, that all of that work's hugely important in the city. It's yeah. massive. Everything you do, like you said before, you help one person. It's a huge thing. Yeah. You know, you help a lot more. We know that that project has helped more than one, but if you if you do, you know, if you do help people, mm. that's, that's something that yeah. you can feel really good about. And that's it. I mean, sometimes when I'm uh, when I'm feeling bad or I'm down or something, they always say, "Go and help someone else. Get yeah. out of self. Go and help someone else." And you feel better helping someone else. It just takes you away from your little problem for a bit. Mm. You see, you've helped someone, and then you come back to yours, and it feels a little bit lighter. So if anyone's struggling, go and help someone else, and then. So, Where are you now, Michael Branch today? How does he feel? He feels changed. He's proud of Michael Branch, which you would have asked me that a while ago. That would never have crossed my mind to no. say that. No, do I still struggle saying it? And does it feel a bit awkward still? Yeah. Um, say it more, though. Yeah, yeah, I should. Say it more. Practice uh, when you were a kid to, and you played in the Premier League. Mm, so there you go. That's what it's about. Uh, and. Yeah, he's in a good place. He knows it's just one day at a time. He's got to not look into the future too much. I like what Dali said is, you can't drive a car looking in the rear view mirror. Because I was forever looking back. If I only had done that, if only I'd done that. I don't live there no more. Just leave it. So, but I've got to be careful not to project too far in the future. Oh, I want this, I want this. Just be happy with what you've got. Live in the moment, live in the day. And today's been a good day. I haven't had a drink. Hopefully I'll put my head on the pillow tonight and won't have a drink. So it's been a good day. And is that what it is? It's literally day to day. Didn't yeah. have a drink today. Yeah. Didn't have a drink yesterday. No, I'll just keep it in Don't the want day. a drink tomorrow. Stop running ahead and think what happens when me 15-year-old daughter gets married in like 15 uh, years. Am I going to have a drink? Let's let's keep it in the day. Uh, th- with this, is, it's, it's such a difficult question, but is it that it's like you could... You feel like you can never ever have a drink, not even for one no. day. Just that's it. That's it. No, I've tried that. I've tried yeah. in moderation. Yeah, and it soon escalates. Does it? Yeah. Is it a, is it a position where you wouldn't even have a non-alcoholic as a, like a, a non-alcoholic, no. like but you just wouldn't do it? No, yeah. people can. People do. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah. No, I'm just asking for you. What what's Michael Branch? Yeah, yeah. No, it's that. not for me. And I'm not. I'm only 
early back into my recovery, so it's still early doors, as in only a few months okay. of proper recovery. Yeah. Uh, but this time it feels different. Yeah. You look like you could still play, I'll be honest. You look <laughs> like you, you go to the gym, you look, you know, sharp, so you, you keep that gym work up and stuff well, like that. Well, that's the first thing that goes, self-love and self-care, and that went, yeah. and now I've got that back. So it's like, yeah, feeling, feeling all, right. all right. Playing the game for the uh, the Knives Down one last oh, yeah. week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I played a couple of five-a-sides before that, and, you know, I enjoyed it. I Did really you enjoy it? I enjoyed it, so... Yeah. I never know, I might put my boots back on and get an over 40s team or over 45 soon. Uh, but yeah, it's your number, mate. That's it. You're not that, I mean, you know, Ashley Young, you know, you're not that, you know, older than him and he's yeah. playing in the Premier League. Uh-huh. Stuff. The, I mean, and you've, you're setting up a, a business for coaching. A running, I'm running, doing, is it? Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm doing me, uh, I'm doing some personal training now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is going to be so it's between a personal trainer and a mentor counselor bring it together so exercise and talk because i think they go hand in hand uh so yeah i'll be doing that soon which i'm looking forward to because i've always found exercise it's I've been on medication before it's like nothing's better than exercise for me i run just sorts my head out uh, and talking obviously uh, but I'm social striders liverpool it's going to be a free running group sunday mornings 8 a.m um, just a, gonna have the first one probably the sixth of August, Sunday the sixth of oh, August, okay. first run, first meet up. Uh, probably start with a little five k all abilities. Uh, literally not there to break five k records, we're there to <laughs> run at a pace where you can chat. Okay. So yeah. it's gonna be exercise. Keep walking for me. <laughs> exercise with meaningful uh, conversation. Just anyone who may struggle to just go out on their own, haven't got the confidence. There'll be runners there. Come on. It's gone. I'll run you this. I'll run with you your first run or whatever. Or someone just feeling down. Sundays were always tough for me. Really? I don't know. It's just something about a Sunday, yeah. Uh, so we'll see. It's got some go- good traction at the minute. Uh, so we'll see. Ed Ped started running, so maybe yeah. he'll get down there. Ped, fuck Ped, will be on it, mate. Yeah. I think he's doing 5k a day. So oh, well, he's the problem you're going to have there is it's an, you've said 8 a.m. Yeah. And he doesn't realise that two eight o'clock on the same day. So <laughs> I don't know whether he'd be there at eight. At the five K, he'd have no issue with. Yeah. It's just actually an yeah. exercise can be a great coping mechanism for so many people, yeah. can't it? Like endorphins released in your brain and your exercise and all. Have you found that? Oh, but that was that was I mean. Yeah. My partner, she says, um, "Have you had your medicine yet?" And she means, "Have you been for your run yet?" Yeah. Because that's what I have to do. It's yeah. like she's on my case because I don't have that first thing in the morning. It's not a good start it's to not the a day. Great day. Uh, yeah, so that's that's the plan. Just get people out there exercising and talking. It's worked for me, and I can only go on what worked for me, and hopefully it worked for others. So it's good. That's it. I mean, that's a it's a brilliant thing. I'm gonna ask you five questions. Wait, well, it's not five questions, yet, but five things you can't do without. Can't do without. Yeah. Okay. Put you on the put you on the spot. So go on, name me five things you can't do without. Oh, as in what context? As if like. You, you couldn't live your life without these five things. Olives. <laughs> Olives? Yeah. Really? Yes. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> no, you've, you've lost me on question one. Go on, then. Olives, go on. Olives. We run on trainees. Good one. Uh, oh, jeez. Obviously, the the family and kids and all that, but we, yeah. we know that anyway. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow. Phone. What do you like with phones? Everyone's like face, but no, no, not bothered. Not that close. You've gone olives and there's no phone. Country music. Country music? Yeah. Incredible. Love me country music. Incredible. Johnny Cash. Right. Waylon Jennings. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow, I'm struggling here. Told you I'd put you on the spot. Yeah. Uh, can we cut this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nettle, Nettle flip this. Nettle flip this um, so it looks like you've said anything it all. else? Vinegar, have vinegar on everything. Salad vinegar on everything. Normal vinegar or apple cider vinegar? No, normal. Normal vinegar. Yeah, yeah. Apple cider vinegar is really good for you. I drink it like get a cucumber, cut it. I'll put it in and drink it out. Then eat the cucumber. Weird. Really good for you. Vinegar is really good. Yeah. Always your blood sugar. It's, not, it's, it's um, a, a corroding my teeth. She says yeah, that's drink not too good. Much. But add no. water after it. Oh yeah. Um, so you're on four. Vinegar's one of them. This is the maddest five. <laughs> Oh yeah, I love history. I love, love watching history. history, ancient history. Ancient history, docs. Yeah. yeah, I'm really boring now. <laughs> no, that's <was> great. <laughs> whatever, whatever gets you through. Yeah. Finally, 
this is the I, I probably should have asked this before, but I'm gonna ask it now. Men need to speak more, don't they? They need to speak more about this. This is how everyone does. Don't get yeah. me wrong, women can do can suffer mm-hmm. in silence. Absolutely they can, but there is a big thing with stigma. You, you kind of mentioned it, but I didn't really want to talk about it. But yeah. admit it. Delhi kind of said similar thing. It's a theme that's gone around. We've seen young footballers take their own lives. Yeah. Young kids who've been released at clubs. And it's sort of like a two-part question. Is one, do you think nowadays enough's done for those boys who, yeah. are, you know, we were released with, I feel like the world has ended. Do mm-hmm. think there's enough done for them? And two, do you think there should be counselling for those for those boys so if they want it do you think yeah. you'll be encouraged to take it up to see if they can because like you said before there's lots of different ways to get back to get back into the game or, yeah. or to move there's so many different facets to football now coaching data uh yeah, yeah. Know, physio stuff and whatever i mean if you if you speak to any club now they'll say we've got to play care to you we've recovered we've yeah. got it all and all that but yeah it's yeah. okay ticking boxes and do they do enough really uh do kids who get released want to then be dealing with anyone back at the club? Because that's where they've just that's been released. It, yeah. They feel ashamed maybe because mm-hmm. they've been released. Do they want to go back to Finch Farm for counselling or to yeah. see someone? Do they need someone away from that maybe to who's at the club but maybe on the charity side? On our health and wellbeing side who's then not associated with the club maybe? Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot more, it's a lot better. Mm-hmm. It, won't, it won't be perfect. They'll never get it perfect. No. Um, it's a business at the end of the day. We're going to throw a big net over a load of young kids just hoping to get the next Rooney. And yeah. the thing is, we'll catch a load of fish with that, but they'll get discarded because yeah. we only want that one. And that's that's all over the world, every club. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, PFA do good work with it, trying to uh, help them out, but it's, it's, it's a sorry way it is. You know what I mean? It's, I don't know. It's just... There, there is stuff out there for them and Everton will say like Liverpool and Man, Man City they will say we've got player care after care we have to keep even if it's a soft touch a soft touch could just be a call they don't answer we've called them we've called them that's it. yeah so that's a magic bullet I don't know but it's, it's a tough one encourage them to speak yeah it's difficult isn't Delhi it? getting it out there help yeah. keep this, it, keep it current yeah and uh, keep getting it out there I know it's cliche again, but as Delhi said, it's like if we save one person or I can make one kid who sits up, sits in bed after the game with his head racing and going, going to work, I need to speak to someone. Or a parent who's like, shit, I'm, I'm exactly that parent he's just been talking about. I need to like sit my son down and say, listen, I'm sorry, or I'm not doing it right. Like, have the conversation, you know what I mean? That and it'll be worth be, it. That could be the big thing that yeah. you do, Michael. Cool. Listen, thank thanks you for very the platform much. to do it. Thanks for coming in and being been a great chat. Yeah. Good luck with everything. Good luck with the recovery. Good luck with, yeah. with your running. Have and to get down. Will you run? Come for a walk, maybe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thanks very thanks much. a lot, mate. Cheers, Cheers a lot. Thanks.